let's continue with the problems so i hope your um, your concepts are getting clear yes sir yes right by the type of problems that i'm covering okay yeah so what is important is to understand how you are going to attack the problem okay most of the problem see in the paper there will be some problems which would be easy some which would be difficult so the first thing that <coughs> sorry the first thing that you need to understand is you have to first pick out the easy problems from the paper right yeah. that is a right. that is a rule for any competitive exam okay you cannot you know uh, you cannot attempt all the questions in this kind of exam so you have to understand how to pick the right kind of or, or the easy kind of problems okay and then yeah. you have to understand how to apply the concepts that you already know okay let's look at now this these are questions taken from the isi paper itself okay number of ways one can express this number as a product of two numbers a and b where the gcd of ab is 1 and b is greater than a greater than 1 <coughs> so what what do you understand from this question so here we have to find first the number of divisors like that like or number of uh, factor of 2 the like number of ways to express it in a factor of 2 then okay Let, see always when you are when you are trying to understand a problem right try to visualize the problem by taking a easier example right so let's forget this for a moment okay look at the problem like this 2 into 3 into 5 right now it is simple yeah. Right. Now read the other part of the uh, question. Product of two numbers a and b. Now I have to express this as something into something yeah. equal to thirty. Right. But the condition yes, is that the GCD of the two numbers that I'm going to the a and b. The GCD means the HCF. So the HCF of a and b has to be one. Correct. So, that both the number must be co-prime to each other. Correct. So, A and B has to be co-prime and there is one more condition given. Both the numbers have to be greater than 1. That means, I cannot consider the case 1 into 30. This is yeah. not, this cannot be considered because of this. Yes. Now, now is the problem clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, before you go into that one, now tell me how many uh, in how many ways you can do this one <coughs> 2 into 3 into 5 how many ways can you do this so 1 into 30 is ruled out you cannot do that so yes. 2 into so you take 2 and the rest of it 15 15 what else? Then 3 into 10. Correct. What else? Then 5 into 6. Right. Then. So, these are the three ways in which you can do this one. Yes. Right. Now, the logic is clear. Yeah. Now, go to that. So, in how many ways will you be able to do that one? So, you have only one more 2, 3, 5, and 7. Yes. Right? Right, sir. So, 2 square into now. Now, let us do this 2 square into 3 into 5. Now, if I have to do this, right, 
using uh, following this condition that the HCF of the numbers has to be 1, then I can do it like 2 square into 15 or 3 into 2 square into 5 or 5 into 2 square into 3, right? Right, sir. But if I try to split this 2 square, I try to do it like this 2 into 2 into 3 into 5, then, a, then the HCF of these two will be 2. Yes. This is what you have to understand in this problem. So, this is just to confuse you. Okay. To the powers have been given just to confuse you. So, you can ignore the powers. Okay. The moment you, you yeah. try to split the power, the HCF will not be 1, the HCF will be something else. Right? Yes. So, yes. So, yeah. for, so yes. now forget the power. So now look at the number like this 2 into 3 into 5 into 7. Simple. Now tell me in how many ways you can uh, express it as a product of two numbers. very simple 2 into 3 into 5 into 7 this is 1 yes right. 3 into 2 into 5 into 7 this is 1 5 into 2 yes. into 3 into 7 this is 1 7 into 2 into 3 into 5 this is 1 yes. right 4 ways is there any Sir, other way? Yeah. Huh? no no yeah yeah only 4 ways yeah but the, is there any other combination possible? I uh, know, sir. No. 2 into 3 Please. into 5 into 7. Why not? This is possible. 2 into 5 into 3 into 7. This is possible. 2 into 7 into 3 into 5. This is possible. Yeah. Sir, right. is there any shortcut for finding the total combination like that? Is then See, or should I have to just by I looking? This, <coughs> this is a problem which you don't need to solve. You should be able to just look at the problem and, and click the answer. You sh first of all, you should understand that the powers are of no use because of this condition. Yeah, yeah that, that part. I, that part I got. Okay. The moment you understand this. Just ignore the power 2, 3, 5, 7. So, what I have to do is I have to take either one, one number with three numbers or two numbers with two numbers. So, one with three means I have to select 4C1 which is 4. Right? Yeah, right, sir. Which is 4, right? And uh, if I have to select two numbers, 4C2 which is 6 divided by factorial 2, which is 2, 3. This is your shortcut. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. sir. Got it. Yes, sir. So, 7 is your answer. See, in all the examples that I am showing you, what I am trying to show you is how to understand and uh, read the problem. Now, look at this one. Yes. This is a very simple one. Okay. I hope you remember log, right? Yes, sir. Concepts of log. See, yes, basic yes. concepts you should remember. Okay. I am not going to yeah, yeah. Uh, get yeah. into basic concepts. So, log a to the base b is log a by log b. Right? Yes, I know. Yeah, I know. So, what will be this one? 2 plus log of x minus 2 by log 2 equals log 8 by 
log of x minus 2 and log 8 can be written as 3 log 2, two, three log two. by log of x minus 2. Now solve this. It is a very simple equation to solve. So, tell me how you are going to solve this before you start doing it. Uh, so, if we assume log x log x minus uh, log x minus 2 by log 2 as x then it will form a quadratic equation then we can very good it. so this would be 2 plus x will be equal to 3 by x that's it yeah so 2x x square plus 2x will be minus 3 equal to 0 so what would be x uh, minus two, uh, two, two comma minus one, uh, two or minus one. I think just a minute. No. So, so three and minus one. Mm, no. Oh no, no, just just a minute, just a minute. Oh, so minus three and plus one. Minus three and plus one you have to be careful with these minus 3 and plus 1. So, now you put that uh, value of x. So, log of x minus 2 uh, by log 2. So, this is minus 3 log 2 or log 2. So, this is log, minus 3 log 2 means log of 1 by 8 and this is log yeah. of 2. So, x minus 2 can be 1 by 8 or 2. So, yes. So, that means x will be what are the values of x? x will be 4 or 1 by 8 plus 17 by 8. 17 by 8 or 4? Uh, 2 and 1 by 8. Yeah, yeah, 17 by 8. So, they are asking for the sum of all solutions. So, you have to just add these two. Yeah. So, what should be the answer? 6 and 1 by 8. Yeah. So, which option? So, so option C. Option C. Now, look at this. This is such an easy problem. Okay? It should not take more than you know half a minute to solve this. There is nothing in this problem. Right? Yes. Okay. So, so you have to find out the ones that are relatively easy. And I am going to give you a mixed uh, bag today because I want you to understand how to pick the easier ones okay so this one was easy right in fact the first yeah. one was also easy all you have to understand is that that power the powers were yeah, yeah. you know just the hcf part just just uh, given to confuse you yes the hcf part okay now look at this one now this one i would say is a uh, i won't say difficult but it's a it's of medium difficulty why medium difficulty? Because there is a concept here which you have to understand, the concept of integral. Yeah. Now, what is the basic concept of integral? Basic con what is the basic concept of an integral? What do you mean by integral? Integration means a summation like yes. some, some. Correct. So, if I have a function and I am trying to integrate it between two limits a and b right that means I am trying to find the area of this curve which yes. in other words I can do by adding the rectangles right 
like yes, this. Sir. Remember? Yes, sir. This yes, method sir. is called. What is the name of this method? So I forgot actually. You can't forget. Rainman sum, very famous, right? <coughs> this is nothing but the basic basic concept of integration. Okay. Yes, yes. So it's nothing but the summation of uh, a function over an interval where the the this delta x will be very small that's all this is this is the layman's concept of integration clear so if yes. you understand this concept this problem is very simple okay now what is what okay. is given this is the function f of x plus 1 is half of f of x right so let let yes. me and and the integral is given from 0 to n okay so let me assume the first value to be f0 so what will be f1 in terms of f0 half uh, of f0 yes half of f0 what will be f2 in terms of f0 f2 that will be half of f1 which means one fourth of f0 or 1 by 2 yes. square of f0 f3 yes. will be 1 by 2 1 by 8 of 2 f0 of f0 so yes. that means what kind of a series is this gp series fantastic gp series and gp series up to infinity infinity so it's an infinite gp right <coughs> yes yes sir so basically the the function will be like this right so it will it will be a decreasing function yes right and it will tend towards zero as n, n approaches infinity right yes so if if you now 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 using the basic concept of integration so i'm going to add up the uh, what do you call the the rectangles right so f0 into 1 plus half plus 1 by 2 square etc up to infinity into delta x so this will be my sum yeah this will be my n correct yes, yes. now what is yes, the sum sir. of this infinite series sir first term by 1 minus common difference correct so this is f0 into 1 by 1 minus half into delta x which is 2 into f0 into delta x yes. right now f0 yes. into delta x is nothing but the area of the first rectangle which is integral of 0 to 1 fx dx correct yeah so that means limit n tending to infinity n will be equal to this yeah right clear yes sir so instead of you know obviously you know you can do it using uh, formulas and all also i mean you can write it as renman sum and all that but instead of doing all that if you just just look at the basic concept of integration you can uh, get the answer in in less than a minute yes clear so once again the 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 questions are based on basic concepts every question is based on basic concept but yes you have to be really uh, thorough with the concept okay okay now this one okay this one is a little tough and i'll tell you why it is tough okay so there are three curves given i think it's came in 2021 paper right yes I, i've taken i'm giving the examples from 2021 paper itself okay so there are three curves <coughs> given here okay instead of three they can give five six whatever right now yeah. by looking at the equations can you tell me what are these curves 
So the first one is a circle. Right. Then second one is a ellipse. Correct. And third one is a para parabola. Fantastic. So now now think of it. Okay. Before I go into the mathematics of it. So there is a circle. There is an ellipse. There is a parabola. Right. So so an ellipse will be like this. A circle will be like this. A parabola will be like this. Yeah. And they can be, you know, depending on the coordinates, etc. That will figure out. But basically, what will happen is, <coughs> they will divide the entire plane into some partitions. Like, you know, if this is the case, then this 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 will divide it into one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Correct. Yeah. Right. So before getting into the uh, into the mathematics of it, if you understand this uh, this thing, that there is a combination of three curves given, three conics. Okay. Yes. And obviously these conics together will divide the the plane into some number of parts. And from the answers, now you you can see four, five, six, seven. Clear? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now let's get into the mathematics of it. So, uh, the first one is a circle, can you arrange it in the standard form of a circle? Standard form of a circle is x minus h square plus y minus k square equals r square, where the center is h k, radius is r, right? Yeah. Remember? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, convert that first equation into this form. Tell me the um, the equation. Just convert the three equations. Give me one minute. I'll get some water. Just give me a minute. Yeah, sorry. So what would be the, so the center? Center will be sir one comma three and radius will be root two. The first one. Yes. No, yes, sir. No, no, no. You have x square minus four x, so that will give you x minus two whole square. Y yeah, square yeah, minus six y, so plus y minus three whole square. Two comma three. Two comma three. So that means yeah. 9 plus 4, 13. You have added 13 here, subtract 13, that means minus 25. So this becomes equal to 5 square. Right? Right, sir. So. so this is the equation of a circle with center 2, 3, radius 5. Yes. Go to the next one. The, the standard form of an ellipse is x minus h whole square. <coughs> by a square plus y minus b uh, y minus k whole square by b square equals 1. Now, here I can see that it is only x square and y square. So, there is no x or y term. So, I can reduce this to x square by a square plus y square by b square equals Center 1. Will be the Center will be origin. So, reduce it to this form. So, x square by 900 by 9 plus y square by 900 by 4. Reduce it to this what? form. Unless you get it in this form, you, you, you might go wrong. So, it will be x square by 100, that is 10 square, plus y square by 4 by 900, that is 225. So, x square by 10 square plus y square by 15 square. Right. y square by 15 square equal to 1. Now, what kind of an ellipse is this? 
Which is the major axis? Which is the minor axis here? So in yeah, ellipse, yeah. that's what you have to understand, right? Yeah, yeah. sir. Uh, why, uh, the, the part that which is vertical, it is that is the major axis here. Why is the major axis? X is the minor axis. Yes. Right. Now, now you try to you know draw a, a rough figure. before we go to the parabola. So, that means, I have an ellipse which is which is like this and a circle which is 2 3. So, the center would be 2 3 and radius is 5. So, 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 is less than 10. So, it will be inside the it will be inside the um, ellipse, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, you go to the last one. So, now I understand that these two are like this and the last one would be a parabola. Now, the parabola can yes. be of, of, of the form y square equals 4 a x or x square y equals minus. 4 a y, eh, depending on, um, on uh, what kind of a parabola it is. So, here it is y square, right? Sorry, not y square, it should be the generic form is y, y minus x, y minus h whole square. Yeah, 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 yes. that's, that's the form. Is 4 a, a x minus h. This is the, this yes. is the case here. Yes. So, that means here it is uh, y 6 y, so y minus 3 whole square. Uh, so, 9 51 minus 9 would be 42 equals 6 into x minus 7. Yes. Right. So, that means the vertex yes. will be 3 comma 7. I'm sorry, 7 comma 3. 7 comma 3. Right. Right, sir. Now, now look at the equation of the circle. Now, 7 comma 3 is a point on the circle also because that satisfies the equation of a circle of the circle. Yes. So, that means the parabola will just touch the circle like this. Clear? Clear sir. So, so now let us see how many regions are formed. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. As simple as that. Right? Sir, what about the lower part that Which lower one? part of the ellipse? You remove this uh, axis now. Now is it okay? Oh, okay, okay, sir. The axis is just a reference frame, right? That's yes, not. Yes. So it's, yeah, yeah. it's basically how many how many parts are formed by these three. Yes, yes. Okay, of the plane. So forget the axis. So five parts. Now, yeah. having said that, if I were to attempt this paper, I would not attempt this question. Let me tell you this. Okay. I will not so what? attend this place because there is a chance to go wrong here. Okay. There is a chance to go wrong. Why I will tell you. Now, th there could be a uh, you know. So, so if, if suppose I miss this one out 7 3 is a point on the circle. Suppose I miss this one out and I draw it like this. Then the answer will change. Yeah. Right, because there is an additional um, point coming here, uh, sorry additional region coming here and the yes. answer will be 6. Yes. So, there is a chance that I might go wrong. Right. So, I am showing you you know how to choose the right kind of question which is very very important in competitive exams, very important. Right. 
So, I will not uh, attempt this kind of a question in the exam hall. Okay. So, if we got time, then we. Yeah, yeah. We obviously try it. If you have time and if there is no negative marking, that is important. Okay. So, it is always uh, these kind of exams. See, remember these kind of exams are elimination exams. Okay. So, yes. so the game is how, if, uh, how uh, efficiently you choose the questions to maximize your score. The, the exam is not about showing your proficiency. It is not an exam which is, going, which is actually going to test you on, on your you know, in-depth mathematics skills. Because from the questions, you can under understand the questions are, are very, very easy. It is it's basics, right. So, yes. it is not actually testing on your skills, right. But uh, what it is testing you is, you know, how to select the right kind of question and maximize your score. Remember this, okay. Let us go yes. to the next one. A box has 13 distinct pair of socks. Let P R denote the probability of having at least one matching pair among a bunch of R socks drawn at random from the box. If R0 is the maximum possible value of R such that PR is less than 1, then the value of PR, PRO would be what? Read the question carefully and tell me what you understand from this. So, there is a box which contains 13, 13 pairs 13 of socks pairs. and so I am going to, I am going to pick at a least one matching pair. Yes. So, now tell me how many socks should I pick, how, how, what is the minimum number of socks that I should pick to have at least one matching pair, guaranteed. So, one pair sir. Obviously, when 313C1. No. No. Think again. Understand my question. How many socks should I pick so that there is a guaranteed, uh, there is a guarantee of at least one correct pair? Guarantee. Thirteen, thirteen, see thirteen, sir. Like we have to choose the Forget. all the possible. Ways. What did I tell you? Forget mathematics. Try to uh, attack the problems based on the concept. Okay. Okay, sir. Try to forget the the formula part. Formula will come later. If you if you understand the the problem correctly, formula obviously is always there. But don't try to jump. Don't don't try to force fit formulas. Try to understand the problem. Okay, let let us simplify this. Instead of thirteen pairs, let's say I have three pairs, and let let me draw this. Okay, just to help you understand. It's a very simple problem if you understand the logic. One pair, second pair, third pair, right? So there are six socks in a box, and yes, what is the minimum number of socks that I should pick? So that there is a guarantee of at least one pair, one correct pair, minimum number. So one sock from one pair and another from another from any any sock, but not of that pair. You don't know what pair uh, 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 you are picking. I mean, you are just putting your hand and at random you are picking. You don't know what you are picking. 
right. So, understand my question minimum number of socks to pick so that there is a guarantee of uh, at least one pair. What is the number of socks that I should pick? Is it one sock, two sock? I can pick how many? I can pick one, two, three, four, five, six. Obviously, mm. if I pick all, all six, there will be uh, at least one pair has to be. But if I pick one, obviously the, 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 I, I don't get one pair. If I pick yeah. if I pick two, I may or may not get a one pair. So there's no guarantee. So my question is, what is the minimum number of socks so that there is a guaranteed of at least one pair? Now have you understood? But I I don't know which which pair is distinct. So how can this be? Okay, if I pick three socks, what will happen? I might pick one, two, three. But if I pick the fourth one, I have to have at least one pair. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that is okay. why I'm, I'm t uh, I was telling you that this, this is a very easy problem, but you have to understand the concept. It's a simple concept that there are 13 pairs of socks if it is three pairs so if it is three pairs i i have to pick at least four okay if i pick four if i pick four then there is a guarantee of at least one pair right yes. so if i pick four then probability of uh, uh, of one pair which, which is a probability that they are asking will be equal to one correct yes but if i pick 3 then the probability is less than 1 because 3 means it it can be three different correct yes right so obviously it's less than 1 so that means in this case there are 13 pairs so how many i have to pick to get at uh, guarantee of one pair 13 c4 no, no, no. There are 13 pairs. 13 pairs. Oh, sorry, sorry. 13 pairs. 13 pairs, then 13 C12. 13 no, C12. again, you are you're, you're making that mistake. Again, you are you're, uh, trying to force fit formula. This is not formula. This is a concept. There are, when I have 3 pairs, that means 6 socks, I need to pick 4 of them to get at the to guarantee of at least 1. Uh, one right pair. If I have 13 pairs, then I need to pick 14 socks. Total 26 socks. Okay, I need to 14. pick 14 socks for a guarantee of one pair. At least one pair. Because if I pick 13, I might pick th 13 different. But the 14th one has to match with one of them. There is no other way out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That means P R less than 1, what should be the value of R, maximum value of R such that P R is less than 1 will be what? 14. Huh? 14. 14, sir. 14. P R less than 1. If for, if it is 14, P R is 1. Guaranteed. Okay. 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 Yeah, 15. 15. Then like. 13. If it is 15, there is a guarantee of at least one pair. If it is 13, then there is no guarantee of one pair. It may or may not be. So, the probability will be less than one. Right? Understood? So, it's not just a moment, sir. See, if you have not understood, tell me. No, sir, I 
can't get you. Okay, you should be very clear when you are not able to understand. Let us draw this. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and it goes on, 11, 12 and it goes on okay. and so there are 13 pairs, 1, 2, 3 up to 13. Okay. Now, if okay, I so if I pick 13 socks from this bunch, what is the worst case? If I pick 13 socks, then worst case is I pick one from each pair. Yes. Right? Right, sir. Possible? Yes, possible. So that means if that case happens, then I don't get a matching pair. Yes. So that then there is no guarantee of the matching pair. Yes. Right. So if an yes. event is not guaranteed, then the probability of that event is less than one. Basic yes. definition of probability. Yes. If an event is guaranteed then the probability is equal to 1. Sun will rise in the east tomorrow morning, guaranteed, probability 1. It yes, will sir. rain tomorrow, not guaranteed, probability less than 1. Clear? Yes, sir. So, whenever an event is guaranteed, the probability is 1. If it is not guaranteed, less than 1. This is the basic concept of probability and this problem is based on that. See, understand how fundamental they, they, they are getting into. Just the basic yes. concept of probability. So, the worst case is 1 from each pair, therefore probability is less than 1 if I pick 13 socks. If I pick 14 socks, then what happens? 1 from each then pair this is the worst case plus 1 and this one has to match one of the 13 yes yes so if i pick at least 14 socks then probability is 1 yeah we definitely get a pair yeah understood now yes okay sir so that means the maximum possible value of r so that pr is less than 1 or the probability is less than 1 is 13 Yes. Clear? Sir, understood. Yes, sir. Now, come to the mathematics of it. What would be the value of that probability? Now, look at the options. The options are all given in 1 minus something. So, 1 minus something means 1 minus the probability of what? So, PR, PR is the probability of getting one matching pair. So, one, that is yes. 1 minus the probability of no matching pair. No matching, yes. So, that is PR 13, I guess. Right. So, what yes, is the sir. probability of no matching pair if I pick 13? <coughs> yes, sir. If I yeah, pick 13, uh, then then my uh, then the number of ways I can pick that is 26 C 13. 26 C 13, yes. Now, what would be my numerator? So 13, sir. This is the mistake that 99 percent of <coughs> students will make. Why 13? So, I am picking 13 socks, okay. Okay. And I am counting the pairs, right. And I am not get, get I, I do not want a matching pair, no matching pair. That means from the first pair, I can pick one. So, 2C1. 
yes into 2c1 second pair into 2c1 up to 13 so 2 to the power 13 by yeah. 26 c 13 so this is the value of no matching pair how can it be 13 i have to understand that i am picking one at a time i no sorry not one at a time i am picking one from each pair so 2c1 into 2c1 into 2c1 into 2c1 up to 13 times okay sir now tell me is this problem uh, easy or difficult what do you think so for me it is obviously difficult <laughs> It is difficult yeah, it because you, you are right from the beginning you are trying to force fit into a formula. And the way that they have framed the problem is that they do not want you to use the formula. The formula has to come at the end, which we did. Even at the end, the numerator, if you if you just go with the blindly the, the formula, the chances are that you will do 13 C1, which is 13, which is what you did. Correct? Sir. Right, which is which is where they, they have laid the trap. In the option, they have laid the trap. Okay, so so the whole problem is based on the basic concept of probability. What is the basic concept of probability? The basic concept is the probability of an event is equal to one if it's a certain event, and it's less than one if it's an uncertain event. Yes. And it is equal to 0 if it is a? If it is like not possible. Impossible event. So, this uh, is yes. what you need to understand. The, the whole problem is based on this concept. <coughs> right? Yes. And when right. you are, when you are, when you are um, looking at the, the calculation of the uh, numerator, which is you know the number of ways in which uh, you, you, you cannot choose a matching pair. So, there also you have to understand that I have to pick one from each pair. So, there comes the formula 2, each pair contains 2, I have to pick 1, 2 c 1 into 2 c 1 into 2 c 1 into 2 c 1 up to 13 times. Yes. Okay. See, all I am trying to show you is how to understand the problem. If you understand the problem, then it is very easy, because the problems are based on basic concepts. Okay. Okay, sir. And also you need to understand which one to uh, do and which one to leave. Now, if I, if I were to take the exam, I would have done this, because by looking at the problem, I could understand that all I need to do is pick 13 socks, just by looking at the problem. After that the calculation is, uh, I mean I will just, just look at the options and I can see 1 minus something that means 1 minus the probability of no matching pair. So, I have to basically calculate the probability of no matching pair, that is all. Yes. Okay. So, actually I, I would have done it mentally, I, 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 I would not have done all of this obviously. Okay. Now come to this one. A, B, C, D are real numbers, all positive, greater than zero, strictly positive. Okay. Okay. Now they are uh, they are asking for the maximum value of C x plus D y. Okay. Now, before I get into this problem, so there are a lot of questions asked on uh, you know maximum and minimum values, right? You would have noticed that, right? Mm. Yeah. And these are based on most of them are based on the basic concept of what? What is the first thing that first concept that comes to mind when when I look at a problem having maximum or minimum? Obviously, uh, AOD application of derivatives. No. Yeah. Oh, uh. derivative comes much later. 
a m greater than equal to g m this is what we learnt in class 9 we learnt derivatives yeah. much later right right so right. so a m greater than equal to g m is the basic concept of maximum minima right yes and this is applicable when the numbers are all positive okay so by looking yes. at the problem the first uh, reaction of most students will be to try to apply this okay but there's a problem here what is the problem now in this case the value of am am is always greater than equal to the uh, the gm so the value of a minimum should be uh, should be equal to the gm maximum right right sir isn't it yes yes so the sum has to be minimum when the product is maximum that is uh, am greater than equal to gm now here it is the reverse they are asking for the minima of the uh, sorry maxima of the sum so obviously am greater than equal to gm will not work here yeah right so for that there is another important uh, inequality just like this one which is called cauchy schwartz inequality have you heard this so i forget this formula i i heard this from you, you heard this, this term. very simple yes. if i have uh, ax plus by ab xy are four real numbers this is always uh, sorry not greater than this is always less than or equal to the square root of a square plus b square multiplied by the square root of x square plus y square okay yeah. you can try it with any uh, combination of any four numbers you can check it out okay so this is uh, very very similar to am greater than equal to gm uh, but in am greater than equal to gm it basically involves two numbers uh, here it involves four yeah okay so this is the concept based on which this is given right so now now tell me now i have given you the hint now tell me how you are going to approach this so that means from here i can write ax plus by will be always less than or equal to so the maxima of this will be equal to this yeah right right so now i apply this in this case so cx plus dy how are you going to uh, write this to apply this so root under c square plus d square into root under x square plus y square but if i do that uh, can i actually find out the value see now look at the options do you see c square plus d square anywhere no sir so obviously that's a wrong approach there has to be a little bit of a manipulation here so either it has to be a c b d or a b c d all options are having that yeah <coughs> right so we have to find the value of x square plus y square from the ellipse part no 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 you can't you can't find the value of x square plus y square from an ellipse you can find the value of x square b square plus y square a square that is equal to a square b square that's what you can find right yeah so you have to do since you have a x by a and a y by b i will write this as ac into x by a plus 
B D into Y by B. Can I write this? Yes, sir. Now, why did I do this? Because I saw that I I have x by a and y by b, so I have to bring this into the equation. And my uh, answers are all a c b d or a b c d, right? Yes. So now That's I can write this as less than equal to square root of a square c square plus b square d square into square root of x by a x square by a square plus y square by b square. Correct. Correct, sir. Now this value is already given to be equal to one. So put this as one. So this one will be vanish. So yeah. this will be your Absolutely. answer. Okay. So once again, this problem is also I would say <coughs> of medium difficulty. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because. Um, yeah. You have to know the Cauchy Schwarz inequality, and even if you know that, you have to look at the uh, the options and the uh, the equation of the ellipse given to do this manipulation. Yes. Okay. Now, instead of this, if if the equation was given like this, uh, let's say instead of an ellipse, it was given x square plus y square equal to nine. Can you tell me then what? Obviously, so we can do that uh, root under a square plus b square into root under x square plus y square. No, then from here I would have written root over c square plus d square into root over x square plus y square, and then I would have put this as nine. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's yeah, what I said. Correct. So, so there are two parts to this problem. One is uh, to understand that you know a m greater than equal to g m will not work. So the other option is for uh, Cauchy Schwarz. These are that remember these are the two options to uh, deal with maximum minima of the sum or difference of two uh, two or more numbers. Uh, Cauchy Schwarz okay. is applied in most cases. It's applied when when we have a combination like this, A B C D or you know A plus B C something like that, right? So can we use it to find trigonometric maximum value of trigonometric expressions also? Like, like. Mm, find the maximum value of nine ten x plus four cot x like that. Uh, maximum value of nine ten x plus four cot x. Yes, you can do that. It depends on what is given. So you know, there's no. Uh, I can't say that. You know, it's just one rule. But yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, correct. So so uh, it depends on what is given. So depending on that, yes, definitely it can it can be applied. It, See, it doesn't matter whether it's trigonometry or uh, algebra, right? What you need to understand oh. is what is given, and you know what are the options given, and what are the conditions given in this kind of problems. Right, sir. Make sense? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, so I have given you, you know, the I'm trying to give you a, a, a complete flavor of. Uh, what you can expect in 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 the paper, right? So, so when you are uh, solving questions, right? Try to uh, think of the of the concept of the problem. What is the problem based on? Don't try to force fit it into a formula, right? Right, sir. So the moment you are able to understand the concept, then everything falls into place, and chances of make, making mistakes are less. But if you don't understand the problem, you you uh, actually start with something else, and you might actually end up, you know, wasting time without getting the answer. Yeah. Okay, and that is the common mistake which uh, all of us do, and you know. Uh, we also did uh, this kind of mistakes earlier, uh, but uh, this is this is uh, how you should approach these kind of problems. Clear? Clear, sir. Okay, so we end here for today.
and uh, we'll continue in the next class okay sir okay take care bye okay